Now, when it comes to Simon Bridges versus Jamie Lee Ross, a listening of allegations obviously are flying on both sides. Mr Ross claims the National Party leader accused him of harassing several women, but Simon Bridges refuses to provide any more detail on that. This afternoon, the chair of the Howick local board, David Collings, said he felt compelled to warn voters of Mr Ross's behaviour during the 2016 local elections after the expelled National MP announced today he will seek a fresh mandate at a by-election. Jamie Lee Ross's wife was running for the Howick board chair at the time. But Mr Collings, the incumbent, beat her out. Well, we sent Checkpoint's very latest special recruit, Lisa Owen, to track down David Collings. He told Lisa even he was intimidated by the MP for Botany and complained to the National Party about him. I know personally of probably three and possibly four of my members that were, were bullied um, and, and threatened and such to the point where I had to actually contact the manager of the National Party and, and just say, hey, look, your MP is you know, he's out of, he's out of um, control. It's, it's inappropriate for a member of parliament to be, you know, to, to be um, trying to influence local board members. We're in local government, we're part of the council, we're duly elected, we have decisions to make and it's not a place for an MP to, to be putting their nose in. I, I see it no different of ringing up the members and saying, oh, it'd be really good if my wife won, wife's company won the contract. It's no different. All right, there's a lot to unpack there. So when you say it's bullying or threatening, in what way? Oh, there were threats about people's political careers and their... And their um, employment. Um, what, that they would go nowhere politically if they didn't do no, what he wanted? Nowhere political, uh, politically. Um, threats of um, your, your career will be over, don't don't take on, you're, you're going to war with my family. Um, a, co a, co a phone call about I can't believe you're throwing your political career away, you know, those kind of things. Really, but just the nature of because it. Because you wouldn't sense. support his wife. Yeah, that, oh, not not me. I never even got contacted. But the other members, yeah, it, because they wouldn't be support. They wouldn't support his wife. Yeah. Politics can be pretty rough and tumble, though, David. So how yeah. was this different from the normal argy bargy that you associate with politics? This was intense. Um, and and Mr. Mr. Ross's behaviour. I mean, the people that it's it's hard because I see him on the. As you mentioned the interview. He's ca cool, calm, and collected. He's he's nothing. Nothing's he's done nothing wrong in his mind, but but there's a there's a there's sort of a background to that. If you if you know him, he's very intense. He's very. Are you saying he's got a darker character oh, underneath? Oh goodness me! Yeah. Um, well, like I say, I, I I was privy to a conversation where he called a member and basically said, "I can't believe you're throwing your career away," in a, in, a, in like a Darth Vader voice. It was it was like Freddy Krueger or something. It was just. And you know you don't make conversation. You don't make calls to people like that. I think um, he might have tried to think, see her as the weakest link because she had, I mean, she's got aspirations in the National Party and, and she's a great supporter. And I think he felt that he could, um, you know, use that to intimidate her. And and the fact that he's an MP, he's, you know, he's he's in a position of power. He was at the time probably the mid the mid whip. He wasn't quite the senior whip, so he's he's getting up there. Look, I mean, I I not saying I'm afraid of the guy. I stand up to the guy and I'll challenge him to a debate any time, you know, there's no, no issue there, I'm not physically afraid of him. But even I, as, as someone that's, you know, 50 odd, I've been around 20 years in local government, kind of feel a bit intimidated, you know, he's, he's an MP, I don't know who he knows, for, for a young woman to be in that situation, I don't know how she survives, I don't, it's not right, you know. I can take it, I'm big enough and ugly enough to, to deal with it, but a young woman with a young family, you don't make threats like that. You say you complained to someone within the National Party. Who did you complain to? Um, I think I, I rang the um, this, uh, Greg, Greg Hamilton. Uh, Greg, Greg, Greg Hamilton? Yes, yeah, sorry, I know another person, Hamilton, I keep getting mixed up, um, who I think is the, the manager of the National Party. I, call, I, I think I had a couple of conversations. We had text messages. Um, what did you say in those messages and conversations? I, I basically, I rang him and I said, look, um, Jamie Lee is talking to members about his wife being the chair and I said, hey, look, not a problem. If the, if the members want to decide that and they want his wife as chair rather than me, I'll just accept that. But the way he's going about it is intimidating. He's threatening members. This is not appropriate for a member of parliament to be doing it, particularly when the case is it's his wife. And what was their response to you? Um, look, Greg, Greg um, um, committed to do something about it, so I, I was hoping that would be solved. I'm not sure, maybe three, four days a week later, I had to contact him again because he was still he was still barrating, you know, barraging the members, berating the members, and um, I think the, I think the member the text message being, oh look, I spoke to Jamie Lee last week. I thought this matter was resolved. So obviously he he felt like he talked to him, told him to you know pull his head in, but. All right.
Yeah. Jamie Lee Ross is seeking a mandate from this electorate. He's resigning from Parliament and he's going to go to a by-election. So he's going to ask people to support him. What's your response to that? Oh, look, look one, of, one of the reasons I'm coming out here today is to, just to, to let the people of Botany know exactly what his, what his past is like. I certainly can speak to the harassment of a young woman in, a, in another, in a, you know, from a, not a sexual way, but a harassing her for, for support and, you know, that what I've just talked about. So I certainly can, can compel that, you know. People listening to this will say, why didn't you say something earlier? If his behaviour was that bad and he was an elected MP and you were a, 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 mm. an official as well, yeah. didn't you have a responsibility to speak up earlier? Well, um, as I say, he put out a, a full page ad about all sorts of things, about me claiming all sorts of things. I created a toxic environment where board members were encouraged to criticise the council staff and all sorts of things, all sorts of allegations. There's about so you five, felt intimidated by There's about 5% truth in there and everything else is d distorted, you know. Um, so I did, I mean, did, I mean, it's powerful. The main thing I would say is just, just for people to be a bit, a bit wiser and do their homework. Certainly if he's going to stand for election against him uh, as an independent, what does he think, he's Winston Peters or something? That's the chair of the Howick Local Board, David Collings, talking to RNZ's Lisa Owen about complaints that he made to the National Party leadership over allegations of bullying levelled against Jamie Lee Ross. It's approaching 5.30. Greg Hamilton, mentioned there by David Collings, has not returned our calls today. Checkpoint has also tried repeatedly today to reach Jamie Lee Ross for comment in regards to the allegations raised there by Mr Collings. Now, a few minutes ago, he told our producer in a text message that he had addressed the claims in his stand-up to the press this morning. Here's what he had to say. Oh, my wife resigned um, from the Howick Local Board. Um, there was a local board team that I was the campaign manager of. A majority of that team decided that they wanted my wife to be um, the chair of that board. And, like I was the party whip at the time, uh, or a party whip at the time, I was the campaign manager. I was suggesting to uh, candidates for that local board that subsequently got elected that, you know, well, we have a team, you make a decision as a team and you, and you stick by it. And so I was suggesting to some of those members that um, they should go with what the majority decision was. Uh, and by the way, the, how political parties work is, I'm finding this out myself, how political parties work is if you buck what the party wants or what the team wants, um, then that usually doesn't win particularly well for you when it comes to a subsequent election. And so they could characterise it as bullying if they want. I'd say I was the campaign manager for a team and I was asking them to carry out what the majority wanted. Does this undermine your suggestion, though, that this is a smear from Simon Bridges as leader when some concerns or reports predate his time in the job, that this goes oh, back until... Look, I was the party whip. By definition, uh, I put pressure on MPs and other politicians to toe the party line. Just so happens that was a local government election. And it just so happens that it was quite personal because my wife uh, was a member as well. And so uh, it is as natural for someone to question um, the actions of what I was doing as a campaign manager um, when it was uh, my spouse involved. She uh, made a tough decision to resign from that local board um, and suffered the, the consequences and reputational damage. I would say to you, however, Sam, that the subsequent uh, central government election, my, my majority increased. So my local community looked at everything that was on the table, it was a year before the election, they made a judgement and they gave me an increased majority. So I'm comfortable with my actions with regard to the Howick Local Board.